I don't know about you, but over the last couple of years, I've started to see solar panels being installed everywhere. In my community, our neighbors got some. There are some more down the road, some more up the road, some around the corner, some more within five minutes, some on the local church. We've had some friends in, that have installed some on the far side of town and some other friends on the other side of town. The local authority has installed some on local leisure centers around the city and the university has some on some residential spaces, some teaching spaces and on their sports center. Solar panels are being installed everywhere in Durham City. And all this gets me really excited. There's more low carbon technology in our communities, but also it makes me a little bit worried. Let me try and explain why. So it may just be that I've noticed this solar panels because I'm particularly interested. You could even say obsessed with low carbon technology and decarbonization. But it really does feel that solar PV installations have accelerated in the last couple of years. And the stats back it up. Um, in the UK, the Micro Generation Certification Scheme, or MCS, uh, well, they track most of the installations of solar PV and other low carbon technology around the country. And then, and some of their press releases over the last couple of years tell a similar to story to what I've noticed near me. So back in December 2022, um, MCS celebrated reaching the milestone of three gigawatts of solar capacity in 1.2 million uh, MCS registered systems. And then January this year, they reported that the UK had had a record breaking year in terms of small renewable installations with over 183,000 certified PV installations in 2023, about 45,000 more than the year before. And this level of installation each year really does have an impact on our energy system. The latest numbers of the MC from the MCS data dashboard suggests that there have been 1,483,000 and when I checked 524 MCS certified installations in total and with some areas in the country reporting over 15% of homes having solar panel installations. Where I live in County Durham there are over 12,100 registered installations or just over 5% of homes in the county. So if we assumed that, that three gigawatt that the MCS reported back in 2022 was accurate, then the average peak capacity of these systems is around 2.5 kilowatts each. And on average in the UK, each of these systems will generate, let's say at least 2000 kilowatt hours every year or a total uh, across the whole of UK of around three terawatt hours each year or three billion kilowatt hours. And if we assumed that an average home uses around 3,000 kilowatt hours per year, that 3 billion kilowatt hours could be the equivalent of all the electricity for around 1 million homes over a whole year from rooftops around the country, which is pretty amazing. And that generation impacts all of us. Domestic solar PV means that our, all of our electricity emissions are lower, but also mean that all of our costs of electricity are lower too. Let's put it into context of the whole country. The total demand for electricity in the UK over the last 12 months has been about 240 terawatt hours, 240 billion kilowatt hours. So MCS certified solar PV, mostly on domestic roofs, has powered about 1.2% of the total UK electricity demand, meaning we burn less gas, burn less coal, meaning we reduce our costs across the board and we reduce our emissions by around 600,000 tonnes of CO2 because of the, the solar panels on roofs of homes. All these rooftop solar PV systems are part of a changing energy system that's moving us away from the traditional centralized big energy generation in big power stations burning lots of fuel, moving us towards distributed generation of energy uh, being generated in our communities on our roofs. This is the energy system turned upside down. And this is obviously gonna impact how we use electricity in the UK. But it really impacts how we might use electricity in those homes too. So what might it mean for those one and a half million homes uh, that have solar PV today? Well, simply it means when the sun is shining, 
they don't buy much electricity. They might try to shift when they do some washing or use a dishwasher or maybe mow the lawn uh, to, to when it's a sunny day in the middle of that sunny day. And they may be shifting when they charge the car or heat hot water uh, to those sunny times too. And everything they don't use might be exported to their neighbors through the electricity um, cables to next door. So the demand is reduced at the neighborhood substation level. We don't necessarily notice that on our bills, but as a community, your neighbor having solar panels does impact your electricity too. And I really like that idea of sharing sunny electrons within a community. But on the sunniest days, for people who've spent money to install solar panels, it could be quite frustrating that you have a solar system on your roof and you're not getting much value from it, from exporting it to your neighbors, which could be where batteries come in. And lots of the systems installed in the last few years will be installed together with a battery. And that means that there's less exported to your neighbors and that the peak of generation in the middle of the day will be spread across the rest of the day. And that may mean you don't need to wash your clothes just when it's sunny and you and that you may it may mean you don't need to buy much electricity throughout the day or night for most of the summer, if not the spring and autumn too. One thing that I suspect happens when someone gets solar panels is that they start really monitoring their energy use. They may even start thinking uh, in the detail of kilowatt hours. How can I get the most out of the system that I've installed? How could I use that little bit more solar, solar generated electricity at home? And how could this reduce my costs? You can imagine that getting solar panels could provoke someone to explore another step in low carbon technology. If you're exporting electricity from your home, you might start thinking about charging a car instead. I mean, every kilowatt hour of generated electricity could be three or four free miles in a car. The sun shines, the car parks up on the drive, is plugged in, the battery fills up for free. Or you might see the gas use that you have in your house uh, as a bit of a waste. And solar PV may help you start thinking about electric heating like heat pumps. Because there are times uh, in the year where the sun is shining, but the weather's cool enough to mean that we might need some heat. Solar generating on the roof, helping to, to power a heat pump or dumping excess uh, generated energy into a hot water tank. So I think solar installations could be the starting gun for a fully decarbonized home. Solar generating free electricity to power a car to help supplement costs for a heat pump and for several months a year, minimizing the amount of electricity bought, bought from the grid. In the UK, it's obviously not sunny every day, but solar can help make the case for making everything electric. Moving away from the volatile fossil fuels with their emissions, their air quality impact and their costs and providing low cost energy for transport and to power a home. I kind of like that idea. Through their data dashboard, MCS gives some more information on the average cost for installations over the last five years. And it looks like uh, during 2023, it went up above £10,600 per system installed. But it's been coming down uh, since then to the start of this year at just over £9,000 per system. These costs are up from around £4,000 back in 2019. So is this because we are installing bigger solar panel systems or because the cost per kilowatt the system has gone up. Well, MCS has some data on that too. Uh, and it says the cost of per kilowatt was fairly constant at around £1,500 between 2019 and the start of 2022, but it rose steadily to a peak at the start of 2023 of around £2,100 per kilowatt peak installed. And it's been dropping a little bit since then to around £800, £1,800 this month. So it does look like the costs have gone up because the price of installations has risen, probably with the energy crisis, but also because we are installing bigger systems in the first place. Bigger systems is partly because we have more efficient or more powerful panels, but also because culture may have changed as we think through how solar PV can reduce our costs in an energy crisis, how we can charge our cars in the future, as well as supporting heat in the future. Solar PV could remove the biggest peaks of the volatile energy prices, it, prices in, in this energy market we've seen this last year. And it could future-proof a home for low carbon transport and heating. 
So I celebrate when I see a new uh, solar PV system in my community. It shouts hope to me about a low carbon future. And I see solar panels, uh, when I see solar panels, I see the first step towards removing fossil fuels from that home. But on the other hand, and at the same time, I do get a little bit apprehensive, a little bit concerned when I just see solar panels. So solar panels for many people who have installed them could feel like making a big green investment, a big step forward to stop contributing towards climate change and a transformational step for your home energy system. But unfortunately, without impacting on our heating and transport emissions, installing solar panels is only a small step and I worry could be a distraction. So what do I mean by that? Well, because of the UK grid decarbonisation over the last couple of decades, our electricity system is actually not that polluting anymore. We've got rid of the, of the coal power generation, we've put some uh, wind turbines and we've moved to, to gas generation. Um, but every kilowatt hour that we use on average will have emissions of around 200 grams of CO2. And if we assume that an average home uses around 3000 kilowatt hours per year, that is 600 kilograms of CO2 emitted to power your home. But the average home also uses around 12,000 kilowatt hours of natural gas a year, which is almost 2,200 ki kilograms of CO2 each year. And a car traveling 10,000 miles a year at 50 miles per gallon of petrol would be emitting around, emitting around 1,900 kilograms of CO2 each year. So just considering those main household emissions, what we would tend to call scope one and two in emissions reporting, an average home's electricity usage is only around 13% of that home's emissions. And if we assume that a solar panel, solar PV system generated around 2000 kilowatt hours a year, like I assume that the average system installed does, which may be quite low for most modern systems, but let's use that as a starter. 2000 kilowatt hours, that could account for 400 kilograms of the CO2 of that home would uh, be reduced, which could mean reducing household emissions by eight or 9%. And that's great. And we should celebrate that. But let's be clear, installing solar on its own or solar with batteries is not decarbonizing a home. It's a small step forward. And many of these installations that I've noticed around in the uh, MCS report will be done with the best of intentions. And that is great. And what 2,000 kilowatt hours a year of generation could also mean is lower costs for that home over the year, possibly reduction in costs of around 400 pounds per year, depending on how much you can use at home and how much you might get for uh, an export tariff. So as the mains electricity grid continues to decarbonize, and yes, rooftop solar does help with that story, the main driver for solar panels comes in the cost reduction on your bills, rather than just emissions reduction. So solar panels could be a great financial investment rather than just being a green choice. And they could be a really good way to use some savings. And as I tried to set out before, investing in solar panels could mean the first step towards investing in an electric vehicle or a heat pump. So let me just be clear, I am chuffed to see new solar panel installations around my community and further afield. It gives me hope that we're heading in the right direction, but also gives me some nervousness about whether we understand the challenge in it, all its fullness. Rather than being the end of a low carbon journey, I hope that solar panels are just the beginning. So if you're thinking of getting solar panels, if you're thinking of spending that hard earned money on a new system on your roof, then absolutely, I would encourage you to do so but do so as part of a longer term plan to first reduce your costs for electricity, but then take big steps forward to reduce your emissions linked to your driving and your heating. And when we've electrified everything, all of a sudden our costs could be very low and our emissions will be very low. Do comment below with any thoughts or questions you have about this video.